Hey guys, this is Nick, and don't ask me about this if you don't want me to tell you any lies. Now today we're going to take a look at a few simple measures you can take to make your online life more private, your data more secure, without making your life more difficult. Now we all know that the current model on the internet is basically trading your privacy for free services, and a lot of people will tell you that staying private is a lost cause or too inconvenient. Or they'll tell you that they have nothing to hide, which is the dumbest thing ever. Anyways, let's take a look at a few simple things you can do to make sure that your online digital life stays secure and private. Just like with today's sponsor, you can ensure that your Linux server is safe and private. Linode is an amazing way to get your Linux server up and running. They've been voted top provider for infrastructure as a service by G2 and Trustradius, and they offer tons of one-click deployable servers. For example, Owncast, letting you run your own Twitch-like streaming server with video broadcast and chat capabilities, or Apache Guacamole, which is the easiest way to get your own fully featured Linux desktop in the cloud, accessible from anywhere in the world. If you prefer gaming, you can also start your own Valheim server on Linode, and they also have one-click servers available for CSGO, Rust, Arc, or Minecraft, among others. Now on top of that, Linode is currently upgrading all their data centers with faster NVMe block storage, which means that every server that you currently have with them or that you plan to open with them will have access to that faster storage at no extra cost for you, which is pretty freaking amazing. Now I personally run my own Nextcloud instance and only Office document server, both on Linode, and I couldn't be more satisfied, I can only recommend them. So if you want to give them a shot and get started, click the link in the description below and you will get a free $100 credit to start your own Linux server. Now just a quick word to begin, free and open source software, or FOSS for short, is generally regarded as the gold standard for privacy. Just because the code is open, you can look through it to see if your data is being collected and if it's being sent somewhere it's not supposed to. If you're not good at understanding code, just like me, well, you can be sure that other people have done so and would have written up on it online if something shady was going on, so a quick internet lookup would give it away instantly. So generally, if you want to stay more private, move over to free and open source alternatives. That's a first great step. So now let's begin with the basics, the web browsing. Use a private web browser and a private search engine. Chrome and Google, Edge and Bing, these are not private options. Who knew? They use fingerprinting and your login info to track you around and make a complete profile of you, what you've seen, what you like, what you've clicked on. Move to something that doesn't collect your data, like Firefox or Brave or ungoogled Chromium, something like that. At least make sure that your browser of choice is fully open source, so people have been able to check what data it collects. Firefox, for example, does have telemetry enabled out of the box, but you can disable it, it's all anonymous, and this can be checked because the code is open. A proprietary browser could collect anything and you would be hard pressed to know. Now, using Google as a search engine is also generally not a great idea. Even if you're not logged into a Google account, they will use fingerprinting to identify your browser, your hardware, and create a profile off of that to display ads and log your interests. If you want to try something else, use DuckDuckGo or Brave Search. And if it doesn't suit you because their results aren't perfect, especially if you don't search for stuff in English, then you can use something that uses Google's results without the tracking, like StartPage. There are plenty of good options that will give you the same results as Google without all the creepy tracking. That's the most basic of the steps you can take to limit data collection. It takes like five minutes to download the browser, import data, and switch to another search engine. In your browser, also only use extensions you trust. These things can access every web page you're loading and create just as big a profile as any internet giant. Check them out online to see if they are really respectful of your privacy. Using open source extensions is generally a good practice, like for example uBlock Origin for your ad blocker. Finally, enable the privacy protections your browser offers if you haven't already. Strict protection in Firefox, for example, will block social media trackers that can track you on websites that display them and add that data to your social network profiles. Now this is more protecting your privacy through security, but passwords are generally the gateway to your data. They need to be secure. First obvious thing is to use complex passwords and different ones for each service you use. If you think that makes them too hard to remember, that's where password managers come in. Use whatever open source password manager you can. Bitwarden is a good one, for example. 
and store everything there. They have apps for your smartphones that will let you fill in the login info in any website, with any browser or in any app. Protect that password manager with a master password or biometrics. Although some people will tell you that biometrics aren't all that great because you can be compelled to unlock your phone or password manager using your fingerprint, for example, or your face, when they couldn't compel you to do it with a password, depending on the country where you live. Also, please set up two-factor authentication. I know it can be annoying to use, but it's really the bare minimum to ensure that a data breach won't compromise you too much. SMS two-factor authentication is okay, but if you can, try an open source local authenticator app like EndOTP for Android or Tofu for iOS. Now, these apps are super simple to use. Generally, when you set up 2FA on any online service or account, they will give you a QR code. You scan it with your authenticator app, and then every time that the service requires you to log in with 2FA, you just open the authenticator, copy the code here into the service, and you're done. So let's talk about online accounts. We tend to rack up an enormous amount of online accounts as we browse the web and use various services. Now, we rarely, if ever, remember to delete these accounts. So there are traces of our email addresses, passwords, and login info all over the internet. And we need to remove that. Now, first, let's talk about the accounts we still use. If you use Google, your first step is to go into the My Activity page of your account and disable literally everything you find here. It won't really affect how things work. It will just make sure that you don't feed the Google beast too much info. On social media, try and take a look at the privacy settings. Facebook makes these super convoluted and change them regularly so people can't really follow all the guides to change things. But do take a bit of time once to look at these and disable everything that seems fishy. Now, if you have more spare time, it's a good idea to also go through all the old emails that you have received or that you still receive from old accounts and use them to go back to your account and delete it if you don't need it. And finally, for new accounts, if you know it's a one-time use, or if you're not sure if that's a service you'll want to use in the long run, use a trash email address to log in. You can create one at Gorilla Mail or Yop Mail, and these addresses will only work temporarily, and ensure that your main email isn't polluted or shared with anyone else. Now, Apple and Mozilla offer services that create fake email addresses as you create your accounts, and which redirect the email to your main address. You can then delete these fake addresses you don't want to use anymore and keep everything private and clean. They can be good options as well, although they are generally paid for. Now, a VPN can also be a good idea to hide some bits of data from the websites you visit and the services you use. They can be tedious to use as they can also reduce your connection speed and most importantly, they're not all created equal. Because basically, using a VPN just redirects all your traffic from your house to the company's server, which can then basically take a look at everything you browsed if they can decrypt your requests if they were encrypted at all in the first place. So to use a VPN, pick one carefully from a company you trust. I'd recommend Mozilla VPN or Proton VPN. Or you could use Linode, this video's sponsor, and set up your own VPN using OpenVPN or WireGuard. It's super easy. VPNs are definitely not a requirement for privacy, and some of them might even be privacy risks. But if you want to hide your country of origin, then they can be useful and secure if you pick the right one. Okay, so all these steps should be really easy and simple to implement and should give you at least a basic layer of privacy and security. But now we can also mess with your devices. The first obvious one is your computer. And obviously, try and use an OS that doesn't collect data, like Linux which you're probably doing already if you're watching this channel. And if not, I don't know how you found me, but you'll never take me alive. <clears throat> All proprietary systems, whether it's Windows or Mac OS, collect data and send it home. If you can't move to Linux because that's not something everyone can do, at least disable all data collection you can in Windows. There are tons of checkboxes you can disable in the privacy and security section of the settings. You should start there. And maybe I'll make a video about how to make Windows more private in the future for you poor souls that are stuck with it. You can also look up some de-spyware scripts for Windows, but do look at the code if you can to make sure that you know what it's doing to your system. And never, under any circumstance, use a Windows ISO that is redistributed by anybody other than Microsoft. You're basically just giving your data away. You don't know what has been put in that ISO, and plus it's probably illegal. Finally, always apply your updates. These have security patches. You need these. Auto-updates are a good thing, and I don't know why people are against them. 
unless they apply in the middle of your work, but that's more of a Windows problem than an update problem. And finally, your smartphone. These are truly tracking devices. They all collect your location data and a lot more. Recent studies show that Android collects at least 50 kilobytes per hour of data. That's 1.2 megabytes per day. And it can go all the way up to 3.6 megabytes. Apple also collects tons of data and sends it back home. You can't entirely disable this, but your smartphone settings generally let you disable at least diagnostic data or Android personalization services. On iOS devices, you can also disable diagnostic data and disable app tracking for all apps, so at least they can't collect too much data by default. It's also good practice to go and check which permissions your apps use and remove access to these permissions if they feel like they shouldn't be here, like a game being able to access your contacts, for example. Now also try to remove all the apps you don't use anymore. You will save some space and they won't be able to collect data in the background without you knowing it. If you feel adventurous, you can also move to a degoogled ROM for Android, like Lineage OS or Slash E. But note that there will be issues with some apps. It's a trade-off not everyone is willing to make. In any case, do apply your updates or turn auto-updates on. Just like on your computer, they have security patches. You don't want to leave your phone open to any vulnerability that could let an app grab everything you have stored in there. Now that's it for a few basic things to give you an underlying layer of privacy and security and at least just make sure that not everything you do is tracked or goes out on the internet. These steps also shouldn't make your life more difficult in the slightest. Now there are way more advanced things that you could do like completely erasing Google from your life or changing your entire OS but this is for another video. And this one was made possible by Slimbook. You probably all know about them by now, but they're based in Valencia, Spain, and they make Linux laptop, Linux desktops. I only use their stuff nowadays, their desktop, their laptop, their keyboard. They're great. If you need a new Linux device, click the link in the description below. Now, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, turn on notifications. And if you didn't like the video, you can dislike it and tell me why in the comments. If you don't like YouTube, all my videos are also synced on Odyssey. And if you want to help support my channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers and my YouTube members, and you'll get access to my weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!